on the 15th day of October, Halloween gave to me 15 runes on parchment, 14 Joseph's whispering, 13 seniors bleeding, 12 creepy masks, 11 dancing demons, 10 Catholic monsters, 9 priests a miracling, 8 Jerry's vamping, 7 Jody's oinking, 6 body swapping, 5 reeds a wolfing, 4 drunken uncles, 3 werewolf colonies, 2 spooky sisters, and a psycho who killed Janet Lee. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to October 15th, the uh, 15th day of our 31 days of Halloween. Um, almost the halfway point, but come tomorrow when it's the 16th, it's going to be over halfway done, and that's kind of depressing. So <laughs> let's just live here on October 15th for as long as we can. Uh, I'm very excited to be talking to you about this movie. It is a super interesting one to me. It is called uh, Curse of the Demon a.k.a. Night of the Demon, and we'll get into uh, the differences in that. So this is a movie from 1957, directed by Jacques Tourneau, uh, and who was a director who kind of came out of the Val Luton uh, studio system uh, with RKO, uh, things like Cat People and The Leopard Man and that kind of stuff. And uh, Tourneau is uh, largely uh, credited with you know, doing things with shadow and light and that sort of thing. Like he's a really interesting, uh, director to be sure. And so this is of course a, uh, a horror film, uh, from this guy. Um, not only was he the, uh, the director of cat people, but, um, I walked with the zombie, which is a pretty terrific film. And anyway, so this is a movie, unlike some of the ones in the, in the previous days, I've seen this movie before, but spoilers, we're doing some demon stuff for the next few days. And Curse of the Demon was one I want to go back and revisit. And as I alluded to earlier, this was not always called Curse of the Demon. The original version of this, or the European version, I think, is called Night of the Demon, And it has a few differences, namely some of the editing is slightly out of order. There's like a scene with uh, the main character in uh, a hallway uh, when he finds um, the the door unlocked. And, you know, it's a really minor kind of thing. It doesn't change substantially the course of the film. Uh, based on where that scene happens, uh, a little bit of context changes, but that's about it. It's not that big a deal, but, uh, also it, uh, it's a little bit shorter curse of the demon is than night of the demon. And originally tourneur, tourneur, <laughs> sometimes it's fun to speak French. Originally he wanted, uh, you to never see this demon that you see in the movie. You see it at the beginning and, and, and at the end. And he wanted it all to be sort of theater of the mind, sort of Blair Witch style, uh, because he was, of course, heavily influenced by uh, the Blair Witch uh, project. But <laughs> he uh, he wanted to leave it up to the imagination, and the studio was like, to hell with that, let's see a big-ass demon. And I kind of preferred seeing the demon. Like, I'm all for... Uh, you know, keeping the shark off screen uh, like they do in the in Jaws, but I think the demon in this is pretty cool looking, and you know, by today's standards, it's a little goofy because it's just a puppet that they've superimposed over the image and and that kind of thing. But I dig it. I think it's really fun. All right, so let's get into the purpose of this, right? So the idea behind uh, Curse of the Demon slash Night of the Demon is that you have this uh, professor arriving in England, a professor named John Holden, uh, as played by Dana Andrews, and he is there to help debunk this sort of cult leader named uh, Julian Carswell. And there was a professor that also tried to debunk uh, Carswell, who we see die at the beginning of the movie. And this is where we get our first glimpse of this puppet demon 
uh, actually a fire demon is what it is that comes after him and, and makes him dead uh, because of some down power lines. And so his daughter is kind of in the mix. Uh, there's Professor Holden. There's also a couple of other uh, parapsychologists and, and psychologists and so forth that are um, trying to work together at this conference that's going to happen where they're going to sort of expose Julian Carswell and his influence with the, the members of this cult. Um, they've tried to get their arms around uh, some of the members and, and try to interrogate them. But the only one that they've got is this dude who has been catatonic and isn't saying anything. And so uh, during the course of the film, as Professor Holden is investigating Carswell and sort of following in the footsteps of Professor Harrington, this guy who was murdered along uh, with his daughter who is helping with the investigation named Joanna Harrington as played by Peggy Cummins. And what happens is Carswell ends up slipping this, essentially a note, like he's slipping a note to him in class, but it's got runes on it. And the idea is if you possess these runes in three days, this demon is going to come for you and kill you. And you're going to get pursued uh, with increasing supernatural shenanigans for those three days. And the only way you can sort of, you know, uh, cut the fuse on this demon coming to get you is to give the runes back to the person who gave them to you in the first place. And for Professor Harrington, at the beginning of the film, we learned that the runes, once he discovered that he had them, kind of floated away into the fire and burned up. So there's no way for him to undo what has been done. And a lot of the movie becomes, is this real or not? Is this a, a real demon in pursuit of people? Or is it by nature of being handed these runes and being told, hey, a demon's going to come get you. Is that what actually kills you? Is it your own mind filling in the blanks and putting yourself in a position to die. And that's really interesting. I think it's one of the coolest concepts in 50s and 60s horror movies is this idea. And that's why Tournure wisely wanted to hide this demon because it amplifies the effect of, well, is it real or is it not real? But I don't care about none of that. I just like seeing demons. And, 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 it, and it's really cool. But I also get it. I think it's a great idea to have this is it real, is it not kind of vibe for the duration of the film. And the the other thing that I really dig about this movie is that once Dana Andrews, as Professor Holden, sort of buys into the idea, or, or seemingly buys into the idea that, hey, I've got this piece of paper that's ultimately going to get me killed, there's a great scene on a train where he confronts Carswell on the night that he's supposed to get et by a demon. And there's this cat and mouse with him where, uh, like, Dana Andrews will be like, hey, do you happen to have a cigarette? And Carswell's like, well, yes, I happen to have one right here. And Dana Andrews will take a cigarette and then tries to hand the pack back to him. And Carswell is like, oh, no, 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 uh, you keep it. I've quit smoking just now. And there's all sorts of stuff uh, with a matchbook and his briefcase and all kinds of stuff where Carswell is just doing everything he can to not accept anything from Holden. And Holden is doing everything he can to try to hand him something with this rune hidden in it. And the runes, by the way, like I said, just a scrap of paper with these symbols written upon it. And it's such a terrific scene, and, you know, spoilers, obviously, for Curse of the Devil, but, you know, this is a movie that is now, what, 64 years old? So, you had your chance, people. Uh, you should have seen Curse of the Demon before now. And so Carswell ultimately ends up getting handed his coat by Professor Holden, and he realizes, oh shit, these runes uh, were in the pocket of my coat, and he pulls it out, the, the piece of paper and it blows away. And so the end of the movie is him chasing after this piece of paper as a train is coming towards him. 
And I'm sure in the original cut of the movie, the idea was he gets hit by this train and the question still remains, was there ever a demon at all? Or was this Carswell just freaking out about being handed these runes? And that's what killed him. Again, the the insinuation in his mind that something was coming to get him was the real evil, not some external force. But, of course, in this movie, it is much more, uh, much more stark that Carswell is, in fact, being pursued by a demon, even though... Uh, Holden and the lovely Miss Harrington never see it, but it's kind of presumed that that from the viewer's point of view that that's what's happened. And so on that level, it's less complicated a movie than perhaps Tournier originally wanted it to be, but it still kind of rocks. And even with the demon puppet and all that stuff, even if, if that stuff doesn't work for you, It's a really interesting movie and one of the first that I can think of that dealt with things like, oh yes, demonology is real and here's the head of this cult that's in in some ways kind of Manson-like, well before Manson, even though he's much more erudite and and much more of an aristocrat, uh, Carswell is, but it still has that vibe to it that he's running this cult of Satanists or witches And you don't get into that too much other than Carswell never denies it. And certainly, like I said, there's an implication that he knows some form of witchcraft, that he turns a a house cat into a leopard for a, a short time. But there is also the question in that of, is that what really happened in this room? Or did Dana Holden just wrestle with a giant stuffed leopard for a second? And it was really a house cat all along, and that's just the way he perceived it. So it does play not fast and loose, but it it plays with the idea of perception and reality. And that stuff is really interesting. It's really well done for a movie of this time, even though uh, ultimately the film seems to suggest that demons are in fact real. um, There's enough of is it or isn't it that it makes it a really fun ride. And also, the idea that Sam Raimi probably pulled the ending from Drag Me to Hell from this seems really believable to me. And that's been suggested before. I'm not the first person to say that by any stretch. But I think that's right. I think that Raimi saw the the end of House of the... uh, uh, the, Saw the end of Curse of the Demon and was like, 100% I'm going to do that. Only you're going to see demons reaching up and pulling somebody and literally dragging someone to hell. Uh, that doesn't quite happen in this movie, but the the whole final sequence being on a train platform and what happens with cars well and that kind of thing, very reminiscent and, and very easy to believe that uh, Raimi, in fact, was heavily influenced by this film. Um, it's got a great screenplay by a guy named Hal Chester, uh, again, the direction is really good. It's a, a great black and white movie. I know there are people who don't like black and white movies. Uh, more the pity that you are shutting yourself off from an entire, uh, you know, sub, not sub genre, like an entire history of movies that exist uh, because you, you just like color films. Um, this is a great movie. It, you know, it, it suffers from the same flaws that all movies of this era do the acting can be a little hammy at times very theatrical very stagey kind of performances but it deals with you know subject matter that if you saw it in a movie today would still be interesting and compelling and that's why curse of the demon is still interesting and compelling because the ideas in it are absolutely terrific so i uh, can't recommend it enough you ought to watch curse of the demon i watched it on uh, i think amazon rented it for three or four bucks it's a a terrific film uh in a great kind of you know let's sit down and have the cocoa and whatnot curl under the blanket and it's just a you know one one of the best examples of 